Well, hi there. Ferns are crazy cool plants. They're seedless vascular plants. This means that they have a vascular system that can move water up from the roots to the leaves, allowing them to live in places where water is only available underground. It also allows them to move sugar down to the roots, which allows them to have roots, since the roots can't make their own sugar in the dark. This means that ferns, unlike seedless non-vascular plants such as mosses, can grow tall and can live in places that aren't wet all of the time. But they do still reproduce like mosses, and the way that they reproduce is bonkers. But it starts off pretty normal. This is a cycle, so we can really start anywhere we want. But let's begin with the zygote. This is a diploid cell made when a haploid sperm and a haploid egg fuse. Pretty normal, at least by human standard. And it stays pretty normal for a bit. The zygote begins doing a lot of mitosis. If you haven't seen our video on mitosis, you should check it out. It's right here. But mitosis is how cells make more cells that have their exact same genetic material inside. This is different from meiosis that produces cells with only half of the genetic material of the original cell. So anyway, the diploid zygote does a bunch of mitosis and creates more diploid cells until we get a big diploid adult. Everything is normal. We call this adult a sporophyte. The odds are good that you have seen a sporophyte fern in your life. And just like with humans, when the diploid adult is preparing to reproduce, it starts doing meiosis to make haploid cells. We also have a full video on meiosis if you haven't seen that before. The only difference here is that meiosis results in spores instead of sperm or eggs. The spores are haploid, just like sperm and eggs. The main difference is that while the sperm and egg need to find a friend before they can grow up, spores do not. So the haploid spore just starts doing mitosis. Now mitosis only makes diploid cells if the original cell was diploid. What it does is make new cells with the same amount of genetic material as the original cell. Since the spore was haploid and never found a friend, the cells produced here by mitosis are haploid. And eventually what we get is a whole adult plant. But this isn't a sporophyte. It doesn't even look like a sporophyte. It's called a gametophyte. And it's called a gametophyte because like the sporophyte makes spores, the gametophyte makes gametes. So the gametophyte plant makes sperm or eggs. But the crazy thing is the process that is used to make sperm or eggs. When humans make sperm or eggs, they do so using meiosis. But the gametophyte is already haploid, so it doesn't need to reduce the number of chromosomes to produce sperm or eggs. So guess what process they use? Mitosis! And those gametes can then fuse into a new diploid zygote, which grows up into a new diploid sporophyte that uses meiosis to make haploid spores. They grow up into haploid gametophytes, and around and around it goes. This is called alternation of generations, because sporophytes can only make gametophytes, which can only make sporophytes, and around and around and around and around it goes. And now you know. If you learned something today, drop a like. And if you'd like to learn more in the future, subscribe to this channel and check out our library of other rad content. And we hope to see you real soon.